Hello everyone, hope you've been doing fine. Today we're gonna to talk about in this video, I'm just gonna give a simple guide, okay, for the development of tasks or exercises according to a cognitive model, okay? Uh, remember that cognitive was everything related to what we're talking about learning and teaching processes, okay? And um, normally in, in the cognitive model, the tasks, um, the, the cognitive model is more the, the, the model that has um, has come out in the last decade, decade and a half, especially in, in Spain and Portugal. And now it, had, it has expanded all over Europe, okay, where we used to train this way over 20 years ago. And now, um, we see now um, in many different countries, not only in Europe, North America, South America, Africa, Asia, um, Australia, New Zealand, all these places, we see um, trainings and, and coaches training this way, trying to use these tools, okay? So normally the task or exercises, they will always have one of the following objectives that we're gonna uh, post here, we're gonna talk about, or several of them. So they may have one or two or even three or many of them, okay? But at least they need to have one of them, okay? Then they must have one of them. Okay. And of course, according to the subdynamic of the week, the more ob goals or objectives they have, the, the richer the exercise will be for the athlete, for the footballer, for the soccer player. Okay. Okay. General game concepts. These are uh, tactical fundamentals of the game that occur indiscriminately, no matter how a team plays. Okay. For example, is opening up or closing up when our team has the ball or when they lose it. Okay. In this example that I'm going to show, I'm going to. Um, create a constraint or, or condition the exercise, okay, or normally a great principles and spaces because we're gonna, I'm gonna show this exercise in, in, in a big space, practically the whole pitch. We're going to create a constraint in the exercise where each team when gaining the ball has to at least give eight or nine passes to score in order for both teams to work the defensive and offensive organization. So this concept is repeated, the principle of propensities or propensions over and over again, eliminating the transition phase. So by um, creating the constraint of giving at least eight or nine passes to attack, I'm gonna eliminate or reduce the transition, uh, offensive transition and defensive transition. So we're gonna see this behavior or this conduct or this principle repeated over and over again. So we're gonna play a, a, a normal uh, type of football match, 11 versus 11, a little bit smaller space. And whenever the team loses the ball, they have to close up, the defenders have to reduce space, okay? And the opposite team, in this case the green team, has to open up, the defenders have to stretch the space, okay? We have to give eight passes in order for us to attack again and score the goal, okay? So this is the only constraint, this is the only condition. So this way we're teaching our team, our players, this basic concept of the game, okay? And it's repeated over and over again, maybe in in 10 minutes exercise or two sets of five minutes, for example, or four minutes, you're gonna see this behavior done maybe 10, 15 times, okay? So this is the main idea, that the players begin to understand the game, begin to understand the concepts, and begin to understand the faces and the moments of the game, okay? Because it's not uh, just gaining the ball and running forward with it, you know? It's just, uh, and losing organization and, and not taking in, into consideration the organization of the game, and the natural state of the game, okay? In the following example, we can do tasks or exercises that their goal or objective are game principles, okay, of our game model, okay? So now, this is probably the most common, especially when we use tactical organization, we're gonna use some macro, meso, micro, and nano principles of the game or how our team is going to play or how we're going to develop our game model. So how the team is gonna play according to the, um, the uh, playing model, okay, we're going to create a, a basic um, principle, a specific principle of a game model, or it can be a nano principle, it could be a micro principle, or it can be many of them, okay, in the following example, and we're going to create the task or exercise, trying to create a constraint so that micro or nano or meso or, or macro principle, again, is repeated over and over again, okay, 
In the following example, under a model based on positional play, we're going to create a constraint in the space so that the team in position is always in numerical superiority, trying to generate an occupy space and finding numerical superiority behind the back of the opposing midfielders or in front of the opposing defensive line. Defenders can only defend within the space they occupy and cannot defend outside of it. So in this case, in this example, we're going to create a constraint where we're going to divide the space in three parts. Okay, um, the first part, the only three forwards can press. In the central part, only three midfielders can press. And in the last third, only four defenders can press of the green team. And the attackers play freely. So they're able to um, take advantage, occupy. Okay, the, the space is going to be um, created by the, mid, uh, the, the defenders of the blue team. Okay, and then the blue team, they're going to uh, occupy the free space and take advantage of it, of it, and take advantage, of course, of numerical superiority, okay? And then the other constraints that you create will depend on you and how we, however you want to make or uh, create the, the, the exercise as difficult or as easy as possible, okay? You can create all types of, of, you know, you can create, for example, numerical superiority in the last third or, or equal or plus one or player of numerical superiority or numerical inferiority, however you prefer, okay? But the main idea is this, you know, that we're going to create constraints according to a sub-principle or, or micro-principle or meso-principle, okay, that we want, in, that we have in our game model, in our playing model, okay, according to how our team is going to play. If we're going to play uh, more a fast attack type of football, then we're going to create principles or we're going to try to create tasks where these Macro, meso, micro, and nano principles will show up, okay? Change of moments or phases in the game, transition, okay? This is another uh, objective or another goal of the exercises or tasks, okay? Whenever we're going to create uh, tasks, they will have or, or they normally have changes of the moments or the phases in the game, okay? So how our team change, especially when we're going to work with rondos and, and small-sided games and, and positional exercises, Normally, they're going to have a lot of this, okay? The change of moments, change from attack to defense, defense to attack. And the different micro principles or behaviors that you want our players to do. For example, if we want them to retreat after losing the ball, or if we want them to press the ball immediately, or if we want them to uh, press or stay still, okay, not move back. However you, uh, whatever your micro principles are of your playing model, this is how you're going to set up the, the exercises. This is why I insist always not to copy blindly exercises that you see on internet because sometimes the information that you can give your players will be contradictory to how your team is going to play, okay? Okay, so these tasks will be focused on the phases of moments of transition. The following example shows how three teams play in a rondo three spaces, four, plus four, four against two plus two, where after four passes, the team in possession can pass the ball to another team, changing space. If there's a steal or if the team loses the ball, team that lost the ball must change immediately from attack to defense and press 2 plus 2, okay? So it's a basic rondo. You probably, most people seen it, okay? Three teams, 4v2, after four or five passes, change space, other two press, and another two stay in the middle and cover lines of passing, trying to intercept the ball. If the team intercepts the ball, they change sides. Again, same behavior. Two players go press and two stay in between cutting the lanes so that the pass, the ball doesn't go through, okay? Very basic, very easy, okay? We're working here, transition, changing from attack to defense, changing from defense to attack, okay? Remember, all, most of the rondos, if they're not analytic, uh, they will have this. They will have a change from attack to defense, defense to attack, okay? Conditional objectives. Now, uh, this is probably the most common one, especially when the integrated training here in South America started in the 80s, okay? And this is that we were, um, I started training this way, and this way we would create tasks or exercises that they would have uh, certain factors, conditional factors. For example, uh, if we were working on the, what we call um, uh, below anaerobic threshold, we know that a possession exercise in a certain space with a certain amount of players, we would be uh, working on the anaerobic capacity, for example, or, or, or below the threshold, for, for example. So we will play around with this, okay? So it will be a task, or you can do this also 
we're going to see an example of strength, specific strength also. A task or exercise where, where conditional objectives will be predominant. These exercises always work in a game-like context. We will also be focusing on speed, strength, and resistance. Always playing around with the duration of the exercise, the space, the amount of players, the complexity. In the example below, the footballer will execute certain explosive movements. These are all formats, okay? You can create variations. You always have to take into account the, the amount of time that the, the footballer is, has, is intervening, okay? And sprint moving uh, to press against six players in possession. After a brief period, maybe 10 seconds, he will then sprint and shoot on goal while after, running, uh, after that running back to the line. Remember that in football, soccer, we're always talking about the most pre predominant energetic system that we use are the aerobic and the ATPPC. So the stimulus, if you're working strength, can never be over 15 seconds. Okay, They have to be rather explosive and brief. Brief and when we're working um, possession exercises, the same thing. Okay, in this case, you're going to see the example. It's a six v one. The player is in the in the square maybe for six or seven seconds. He sprints there before that, grabs the ball. He can create a one v one situation. He can shoot on goal and then sprint back. He can sprint back in a straight line or in a curved line like we saw there. So always take into account the more uh, similar tasks or exercises compared to the game. We're always trying to make this, okay, very similar actions to what they're doing in a real match, okay? Here, remember that we're working specific strength, okay, because the player is, uh, the tension of the contractions is very high, and he's always stopping, turning, and changing direction, okay? So, he's stopping and going constantly, okay? So, it's a uh, an exercise where we're going to work specifically specifically uh, the football strength or strength related to football. Remember that quickness and speed, according to Professor Seirulo, is all related to speed. For us, training strength is really training speed, okay? Okay. Related to functional organization and system or structure, okay? So... Another goal or another objective that your task may have or can have is when they're related to functional organization and the system or the structure, okay? So when we create a task or exercise related to a certain movement within our system or functional organization, system variation. In the following task, which is an analytical one without opposition, we will exercise different variations and movements within our system or structure, for example, related to functional organization. So in this type of task, we're going to create movements that the players, according to the situation in real matches, will do, or will, they, will, they will execute, okay? So in this case, the wing moves inside, very basic movement of 4 3, three. Okay, the fullback goes outside, he overloads, and then we work on offensive balance, of course, you know, and finishing the play, of course. So always this type of um, task also, um, they may have these type of objectives, okay? These tasks may have these type of objectives when we're working on the functional organization, the variations of the system or the structure, okay? If we're going to create movements where we're going to overload through the outside, if we're going to create numerical superiority through the inside. So we're always going to be giving information to how we pretend our players to behave or to do in a real match. Okay, the types of task or preferential simulation situations. This is how a Professor Seilulum of Fulcul Barcelona calls them, okay? As we mentioned before, by the way, you can see um, the methodological tools or PSSs, several examples in my channel. You can see all types. Here we're just going to mention them. As we mentioned before, the task must have tactical content or what we intend to teach, be it a way of playing, an evolution of the football or both. In a cognitive model, this is the most important thing. How will our team play? Rondos, for example, this is one variation. Okay, this is one tool that we have or uh, as Professor Seydoulo calls on a PSS. Ball possession exercises generally in small spaces and with few players. They are usually made up of two or three teams within, with and without jokers where the physical and mental intensity is high, although the complexity of the exercise is not. Okay, they may not, they may or they may not have jokers. They promote 
playing very quickly in small spaces where decision making has to be made in a very short time and space. There are many types, the basic, mobile, double, triple, etc. Okay, so uh, you know, in Spain especially, we have batteries of <laughs> rondos of all types. Okay, but basically, we're always working on changing from attack to defense, defense to attack, organization and reorganization. Okay, and disorganization. So basically, they're always going to be focusing on this. Of course, we're going to working. We're going we're gonna to be working in all the dimensions in this now, psychologically. We're going to be working physically, we're going to be working uh, technically, we're going to be working tactically, we're going to be working uh, co as far as communication with our teammates, you know, numerical superiority sometimes in some cases, um, social affective superiority, you know, all these type, positional, etc. okay? Possession exercises. Now, these are similar to Rondas, but in larger spaces. A great number of footballers and where the footballer does not necessarily have the obligation to respect the space or his natural position. So, in other words, now they're going to be able to move freely throughout the space. Okay, to score a goal. In this case, a pass must be given to a teammate between the goal or goal made by two cones. It cannot be repeated immediately. Okay, and this is an example made famous by Arrigo Sacchi. I remember in, uh, when he coached the Italian national team. They lost the final to Brazil by penalties in the U.S., if I recall. And uh, in the video, of when they show him training, they, he shows this example. Okay, so it's a very good example because we're going to be working a lot of aspects, a lot of things, tactical things. And we're also going to be working conditionally, aerobic uh, capacity. And tactically, it's an excellent exercise, although it's not positional. You can see that the players, they are able to move freely throughout the whole space, okay? Okay, like I said in the other videos in my channel, these are tools that you have where, this is the idea of the channel, to give coaches, young coaches and coaches who are not used to training this way, tools so they're able to uh, train this way. So it's, you see that it's not so difficult. Positional exercises, games and positional rondos. Similar to the previous ones, although now the footballer must respect the space or position, generally associated with a position that he will occupy on the pitch. They tend to have more specific content to the team's game model and structure, of course, and, and the system. And in this case, it's a positional play 5v5. So, 5v5v5. Five five. So, um, or 10v5, actually. So, we're going to see the structure of uh, two central defenders, one central midfielder, two fullbacks. And on the other team, on blue team in this case, will be one offensive midfielder, two wings, and two forwards. So we're always going to be playing around with this structure, the same principle as before. Three red players will press, two will be in the middle, closing down the lanes and the passes. If they give more four, uh, four passes or more, the green team can change to the other space, and the red team, again, reorganize, press with three players and two in the middle. If they lose the ball, the team that gains the ball changes and now and organizes again very quickly. Okay, now we're going to be re focusing also not only on transitions, but also on reorganization, okay? And in the same behavior, three players press and two cut down pass, lane passes, lane passing in the middle, okay? You're going to see after four passes, they change and they can play with the blues. And again, the blue midfielder comes inside, green offensive midfielder comes in the, lane, in the middle lane, okay, and same structure again. After four or five passes, they change. If they steal the ball, three teams, the three players press immediately, and the red organize immediately in the same structure, okay? So now we're not only gonna be working on all the dimensions, technical dimensions and all this, but also we're going to be working the transition, but also we're going to be working reorganization, okay? Which is very important, okay, in a football team, in a soccer team, okay? And finishing and defending our own goal exercises, okay? So actions where we seek through systematic repetition to be repeated over and over again in real game context. In this case, it's a team on build-up phase, the red team plus a midfielder, so it's a back four plus a midfielder against three players of blue pressing, okay? The, the build-up of the red team in, in, from the back. The red team has to find one of the two goals on the sides with the cones, and one of the fullbacks has to dribble through. 
Once this happens, the two midfielders in the middle break out a transition 5 before with the fullback that just uh, dribbled through the cones to score the goal has to reorganize, re reincorporate to the defensive block. Okay, so basically this is a, a, an offensive organization and defensive transition and offensive transition for the blue team at the same time. Okay, so now create, we create a 5 before with the fullback trying to uh, gain back, uh, return to his position. Okay. And the red team here are working defense in transition and trying to delay the attacker so they gain, again, a numerical equality. Um, of course, this is just a format. You can create all these types of exercise, however your team will play and whatever system or structure you use. But the main idea is always training what you're going to do in the matches. Then we have games with constraints, okay? And this you can play around also with jokers outside, with another team waiting outside, or playing as, as, as support. Or in this case, for example, it's just a normal match with two jokers. The main principle here is to find the, the free man. So there's always going to be one player free because there are two jokers with the playing position, okay? And they just need to find the free man, okay? Uh, I, I know that Cruyff, for example, when he was in Barcelona, most of the match, most of the sessions, he would finish with a, a 7v7 plus a joker. So he would work this a lot. Okay, finding the free man. Okay, very simple exercise. Okay, so games with constraints are matches similar to normal ones, but generally in a little bit smaller space. They can be with goalkeepers, larger, smaller goals. They, be more, they may be more positional or not. Through these matches, we aim to execute big principles of, of conjunction of many micro principles or concepts. In this case, this is what I just explained before. And the complementary exercises normally are analytical exercises. The, the coach that made famous uh, um, the way, this way of training, especially it was Marcelo Vielsa, Argentinian head coach, who I was one of my personal favorites for over I don't know, 20, 25 years. Um, recently, they discovered him in Europe in the last <laughs> 15 years, maybe first in Bilbao and, and, and later in Premier League in Leeds. Okay, complementary exercise or analytical exercise are at tasks where you're going to create, where um, you're going to try to repeat over and over again behaviors, normally in normal high speed. Okay, that normally when we're working in professional football, they're more specific um, the more specific position specific and when we're working on um, academy football or youth football okay uh, we're going to be working more on concepts of the game as well so um, these are normally um, tasks for improvement or acquisition of certain desired behavior especially given in the beginning or as complement to a task in a context later an exercise in passing dynamics is a clear example for example Factors such as spaces, complexity of the task, time, breaks, duration of the exercise will condition the task and must be carefully analyzed before designing and putting it into action. In this case, it's just um, the, the, back the, the fullback is supposed to uh, clearance. He's supposed to try to clear the ball without letting it bounce, for example. Okay? And then he's going to have a 1v1 situation where he has to defend the goal. These are all variations. You can have, you, in the internet, you can see, especially Bielsa, Sampaoli, um, Pochettino also trains this way a lot, uh, situations where the player has to have one action immediately after the other. Okay? And this is just a basic format. Okay? You can create whatever variations or formats you prefer. Okay? Okay, he's supposed to clear, and then he has a 1v1. And you can do this 4v4 again, end up, for example, okay? But it's basically always working with a specific actions that the player or the footballer normally, according to his position, he's going to have, okay? He's going to do in the matches. Okay, so basically, if you have any doubts, you have my email at the end there. Don't, don't hesitate to, to write to me. And... Uh, and if you have any suggestions as well, please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe so we can, can uh, keep coming up with more material for young coaches, for older coaches, for coaches who uh, would like to, um, to see how um, 
we normally have been training in, especially in Spain, Spanish methodology, which are normally, of course, you have the Portuguese school with Professor Vito Frade, that is very important as well. So these basic two schools are related to a cognitive model. So uh, we can come up with more material, more tools for young coaches, for physical trainers, for people who like or, or who, who see the football or soccer as their passion, okay? Hope to see you again. Take care. Bye-bye.